From within Retrospect, we can get a view of what devices are available for backup to the Retrospect software. To get to that area, we go to Configure and we go to Devices. Retrospect will then display devices for which we load a device driver, such as CD devices and tape devices. Hard drives will not appear in the Configure Devices window. So what we can see in this window is some status information. So it tells us that we have a TX CDRW drive attached, and if we insert a piece of backup media, it will load that media and display for us the actual name of that disk. Once Retrospect loads the device, or the media, it will then show the name of the media that's in the drive. The M indicates that it's a member of a known backup set. It also indicates the disk name is called one dash backup set A and the media is ready. If we insert a blank disk, it'll report that the disk is erased. We can do a lot of different things from within this window. If I select the disk and I right click, I can get properties on the disk and it'll show us information about that disk itself. We can also eject the media as well as erase the media if you were using a RW type of disk or a tape. When we click on the Environment tab, Retrospect shows us what we call the Device Inquiry for your storage devices. When we look in the window, we see some very important information. The first column that we care about is the vendor. In this case, the vendor is TEC, and the product is CDW224E, and the firmware version is L.0E. In this column in bold is the driver name that Retrospect is loading for this particular device. When a customer purchases a new storage device for use with Retrospect, it's important that they go to this window and look for the specific device they have to identify whether Retrospect is loading an appropriate driver. It's also important that the user identify whether they are using a supported storage device. They can do that by going to www dot d a n t z dot com slash hardware. In the hardware compatibility database, the user can look up their device and learn whether the device is supported or not. In this window, you'll also see information about how Retrospect accesses the device. It'll show up displaying devices visible using NT pass through, which is the default, or it may say devices visible using ASPI if the user has ASPI installed. In the case of CDRW, Retrospect loads a specific driver for the device. This driver has been created by the Dance Lab and tested to make sure that the drive is working appropriately with the Retrospect software. In some cases, CDR drives may ship and they may not have a driver for natively available within Retrospect, so we offer an automatic configuration method. To automatically configure a drive, Retrospect will typically display an automatic configure screen that looks like the following. From within, from within this window, you can click configure and then Retrospect will run a series of tests and attempt to create an appropriate driver for your device. When a device driver has been custom configured for use with Retrospect, the driver information in the Environment tab will indicate .rdi next to the driver version number. In an ideal situation, you want to use a device that is automatically supported by Retrospect or contains native support within Retrospect. With tape drives, you would only be able to use that tape drive if it does have native support within the product. Dance is often adding new device drivers, and so it's important that users check our website at www.dantz.com slash updates to find out whether new driver updates are available. Driver updates are typically a single file that goes into the Retrospect application folder. The driver update file is named rdu.rpx, and it's located in inside the Retrospect folder under Program Files. These drivers are released about once a month. You can see the current version of the driver by going to the Operations Log. So when we go to Windows and select Log, Retrospect will show that we're using Driver Update 7.0.3.101. 
When a user does a backup to a CD device with Retrospect, that CD is only readable in a supported CDRW or DVD device, depending on the type of media you have been using. Retrospect typically writes the data using packet mode, which allows us to have multiple backup sessions without losing very much media space between sessions. It also allows for variable speed writes during the backup process.